This can get cheaper the older you are. In this episode, we are going to dive deep into answering the question, doesn't universal life insurance cost more the older you are? This is video four, episode four of a series of 21 that if you immerse yourself in Secrets to a Tax-Free Retirement, which is the name of the series, you're going to empower yourself to have an extra million dollars or more that will generate $100,000 a year of tax-free retirement income into perpetuity. So my name is Doug Andrew and I've been helping people optimize their assets and minimize taxes and prepare for retirement now for more than 45 years. My favorite vehicle by far is a max funded tax advantaged indexed universal life insurance contract that when it's structured properly and funded correctly, it will knock the socks off of any IRA or 401k that you could show me. Now, in this episode, I'm going to talk about the history behind why it's tax free and how the IRS challenged it when EF Hutton, the brainchild behind the emergence of universal life first came out with the idea back in the 1980s. As I mentioned in previous episodes, when I saw that this was buy term and invest the difference on steroids, I began to help many, many people put their money into the universal life insurance product that came out in 1980. Now, there were several companies that began to emerge and back then you could just self-insure. As I mentioned in another episode, if I found somebody who wanted to optimize $500,000 and it could come from all kinds of sources, whether they sold some real estate or they took some money out of a bank or credit union that was earning lower interest or they rolled money out of an IRA or 401k, all of the resources they wanted to create greater liquidity, safety, and more predictable rates of return and have it be tax-free, they would tell me the assets that they wanted to reposition. So for the sake of this uh, video, let's say that uh, we are going to uh, grandfather ourselves to be able to put in $500,000. You don't have to put it in all at once, but let's say we do. Back in 1980, I had many people doing that. They would throw in $500,000 in one fell swoop. And back then they were crediting between 11 and three quarters to 15 and a half percent. Let's just say 11. As I mentioned in another episode, from 1980 to 1990, I never earned less than 11 and three quarters. So let's say it's 11 and I'm netting 10% cash on cash rate of return. Only one of those percentage points pays for the insurance that the IRS says has to be there in order for it to be tax-free. That's called the internal rate of return. There's a lot of insurance salespeople that do not know how to calculate the internal rate of return. They think their life insurance, if it's crediting seven or 8%, which some whole life touted to do for years, that's not the internal rate of return. In fact, a lot of whole life insurance, if it was earning 8% in dividends, you would only net 5.9% by the time you were 95 years old. See, with universal life, I can earn 11 and net 10. I can earn eight and net seven. There have been years I have earned 16 and netted 15. One year I netted 24 out of a 25% gross return in 2017. So how do you do that? When people would put in a half a million dollars and if they're earning a net of let's say 10%, which they were back then, that would mean they could pull out 50,000 a year of tax-free income. Well, we had this massive amount of money that was being transferred in exodus out of the banks and the credit unions, the brokerage firms, because these were safer, they paid higher interest, they were tax-free, and uh, when you died, they blossomed, they increased in value and transferred income tax-free. Nothing else did that in the Internal Revenue Code. But see, the IRS said, hmm, Hutton, we think you're overstepping your bounds. And so they basically took them to court. EF Hutton won. They weren't doing anything wrong. It's insurance. The IRS said, well, who puts a half a million dollars into a dinky little insurance policy? The actual amount at risk is only $10,000 because the death benefit was just slightly higher than the amount of money you put in there. They said, our clients do. 
They were not violating sections 72E, 7702, and 101A of the Internal Revenue Code. So, long story short, the IRS went to Congress and said, we need to change the definition of tax-free insurance under those three sections of the code. In 1982, they came out uh, with a portion of the Tax Equity Fiscal Responsibility Act. That spells the acronym TEFRA, T-E-F-R-A. Now, you probably may not be surprised, but the IRS didn't even understand what they were doing. And so two years later, they had to redefine it again because they uh, didn't understand uh, what it was really doing. And so under the Deficit Reduction Act of 1984, that's DEFRA, D-E-F-R-A. So this is called the TEFRA, DEFRA Corridor. Let me share with you how this can be powerful for you. So under the TEFRA and DEFRA tax citations, the IRS basically dictated the minimum amount of insurance benefit, the death benefit, that must come along for the ride under a maximum funded insurance contract in order for you to not violate the definition of tax-free accumulation, tax-free access, and tax-free transfer under sections 72E, 7702, and 101A of the Internal Revenue Code. Now, the neat thing about TEFRA and DEFRA is it said, you know what, we know your objective is to have tax-free living benefits. So you don't have to have a whole bunch of insurance unless you're a young person. They gave it parity. Now, what's parity? That's equality. Because they knew that people were using this for living tax-free retirement income in a lot of instances. And so Tefra and Defra said that for a 60-year-old who wanted to set aside $500,000, there must be some risk that the insurance company is incurring in order for it to qualify to be tax-free under those three sections of the code. A 60-year-old who wants to set aside $500,000 was required to have about $1,250,000 of life insurance. Now, they could buy way more life insurance than $1,250,000 for a half a million dollars, but that wasn't the objective. They didn't want to get as much insurance as they could. They wanted the least amount of insurance the IRS would let them get away with and put in the most money, in this case, a half a million. It's the backdoor approach. So if I want to put in a half a million, Tefra and Defra says that age 60, I have to have $1,250,000 of insurance attached. Now, if you were 21 years old, you had to have more insurance because it gave parity. If you were 80 years old, you could get away with even less insurance. Maybe to put in 500,000, you only needed 800,000 of insurance. What does this mean? The older you are, the less insurance you're required to have in order for it to comply and be tax-free. What does that mean? You wouldn't believe how many insurance agents do not understand what I'm about to tell you. It doesn't matter how old you are, even how unhealthy you are. The cost of the insurance is the same. The amount of insurance required goes down the older you get. And as your money grows, the insurance becomes cheaper as you get older. Did you hear that? Now, let me explain why. If my objective is to put in some money and earn an internal rate of return, let's say of 10%, because that's an easy number, and I've actually averaged 10.07% for the last 25 years. That means if I put in a half a million dollars, I want that half a million to grow at 10% tax-free. They half a million will double to a million in 7.2 years. In 15 years, it will double again to 2 million. And see, I want my money to grow tax-free. So the minimum amount of insurance is a million to 50 at the outset. Under Tefra and Defra, I have to have a million 250,000 of insurance to put in a half a million. So the insurance company is only at risk for what? The difference. Because a half a million of it is my own money. I'm self-insuring. So the insurance company is only at risk for the remaining 750,000 if I die. They only charge me for what they're at risk. But if my half a million in 7.2 years doubles to a million and the original death benefit was a million 250, 
I can add it on top, but I don't do that. I want to uh, have living benefits. So now I have a million of cash and the insurance company is only at risk for the remaining 250,000. The amount of insurance that they're charging me for is less the older I get. So you say, wait a minute, a million is going to double to two million and you started out with a million two fifty. That's right. Now the insurance grows with your cash. It must stay five percentage points ahead of it. So when I have two million of tax-free money, the insurance now is 2.1 million. It's only 5% greater. So the cost of the insurance is going down. See, oft times I say, you know what? I earn 11, I net 10 on the average. But the insurance policies that I have had for more than 30 years, it's actually 1 20th the cost that I paid when I was 30 years younger. Have you ever seen an insurance policy that gets cheaper as you get older? Then you haven't seen one designed correctly like I'm talking about. It means this. If I now have $8 million and I earned 11% this year gross, I would net 10.9, 10.95. It's draining out a little tiny portion because my 8 million bucks is generating cash like crazy and the cost of the insurance is way less than it was when I was 30 years old, even though right now I'm 68. So this actually gets cheaper as you get older. Now, what if you're totally uninsurable? You can own this on someone else, a surrogate, your spouse, your kids. Banks own these on people. The owner of the insurance contract gets all the tax-free accumulation and growth. So if you cannot qualify for the insurance, you can still get all the tax-free growth and income by using someone else's life to insure. But if you're insurable, I would recommend you get it on you. In our family, we always keep insurance on the oldest family member so that when they pass away, it blossoms. We take 20% of that death benefit tax-free and put it into another insurance contract on the next oldest, healthiest family member. And our family is empowered and endowed with tax-free capital for generations. So the big takeaways are these. Under TEFRA and DEFRA tax citations passed back in 1982 and 1984, it dictates the minimum amount of insurance based upon your age, your gender, and your health. But it doesn't matter how old you are or even how unhealthy you are. You can own this on yourself if you're insurable or on somebody else. But it doesn't matter if you're a 21-year-old athletic marathon running female or a 68-year-old geezer like me or an 82-year-old friend of our family who had three blocked arteries, adult onset diabetes, a prostate cancer episode, th three brothers predeceased him, and six sisters. He was still healthy enough to qualify. The cost of the insurance is the same, meaning the 21-year-old, the 68-year-old, the 82-year-old, the amount of insurance that they're paying for goes down as you get older and if you're more unhealthy. So that if our goal is to all earn 11, let's say, and net 10, then every one of us with the money we put in can earn 11 and net 10% tax-free rates of return because the amount of the insurance required is less the older you are. And as your money grows, the insurance becomes cheaper. This is so powerful. If you want to learn more about how this works and actually see charts, this is why we wrote our 11th book, The Laser Fund. It's over 300 pages, charts, graphs, explanations, 62 actual client stories of how this works. And I want to have you claim your free copy. What you do is just go to laserfund.com and uh, pay $5.95 shipping and handling, and I'll fire out a copy of this 300-page book for you. And I also implore you to watch the other videos in this series, Secrets to a Tax-Free Retirement. This one next will help you connect the dots.